Okay, uh, this is the bit that we've done in class, but I'm just going to make sure you've got it on the video so you can come back and see it later. Okay, so uh, this is the forces and acceleration bit. So, first thing you need to get your head around is Newton's second law of motion. And fully stated, it is as follows. The acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to, and in the same direction as, the magnitude of that net force. And it is also inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now that is an awfully long mouthful and there's a lot to say. So the easy thing to say is that the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And that means exactly the same as that sentence up there means. It's just a whole lot nicer. If you want to make it a little bit more algebraic, we can put the sum of the forces, so the net, the resultant force, after I've added them up, found the resultant I'm going to keep saying it because it's really important. It's the resultant force that's going to cause your acceleration. So our resultant force equals the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so this is now um, the second of Newton's laws we met. So there's just a little something I need to say about Newton's laws that you need to remember uh, pretty much for your exam. So um, Newton's laws of motion are really useful. Um, they make a lot of very good predictions um, and they're fairly accurate about how bodies are going to move in what we would call classical mechanics. So when we're talking about things that are on a scale that we see every day basically, so for in terms of throwing a ball up and down the air it's pretty good, uh, for shooting an arrow it's pretty good, um, but Newton's laws fall down once we get into sort of different parts of physics. And the two places that it particularly falls down is when we have speeds that are close to the speed of light. So things are travelling really, really fast. Um, we need to use something called relativistic mechanics instead. Now, the reason for the exam that we cannot use Newton's laws for objects travelling near the speed of light, and this is just for the exam, this isn't quite true, but it's what the exam board want you to say. The reason we can't use Newton's laws for objects travelling close to the speed of light is that as their speed increases, so does their mass. Now that's not true, it's an oversimplification, but that's how the exam board would like you to state it. Um, if you'd like to know more, you can ask me. Um, so we can't use classical mechanics for things that are moving fast, and we also can't use them for very small things. So anything that's smaller than atoms, really, um, these don't work, and we need to use a different type of mechanics, which is quantum mechanics. Okay, so we're firmly in the realm of classical, and we just need to know some of its limitations. Okay, that's it for this one. Um, just key things to take away. Whenever you're using F equals MA, remember the F is the resultant force. And you always need to think, right, which way is my acceleration going to be? Which way should my resultant be? Which force is going to be bigger? Okay, and that is it. Hopefully that was nice and quick and easy.